talk to you. Yeah, you too. Look, uh, you know, conventional wisdom, we've got uh, moderate Biden versus uh, a fiercely left of center pack of challengers. Uh, is that the way you see it tonight? Well, it's a big night for Joe Biden. Uh, obviously, he's on the stage in that ideological position. Um, much lonelier than he was with some of the moderates not in this debate uh, tonight. So it is the first time that he's up against Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders on the stage, and I think that dynamic will be the primary one to look at. But there are so many other stories here, and I think we're so early in the process that Biden's uh, staying power is really the biggest question. Have you been troubled by some of his, uh, you know, I, clearly the Washington Post story about the uh, uh, military veteran, that kind of amalgamation story. Have you been concerned about that? You know, I cover it. So as far as my concern about it, I, I note it. And I give the Biden campaign and uh, the former vice president, you know, leeway because you, you make gaffes on the trail. Some of these gaffes, though, are big ones where he says that he was vice president when he talked to some of the school children after that, that shooting, um, which he wasn't. It was Mike Pence who was vice president. So they're bigger gaffes than kind of the stumbles on the trail. And it'll be interesting to see if any of the candidates on the stage take that up as an issue tonight. Another division here, three septuagenarians leading in the polls, uh, uh, you know, a, a brat pack, so to speak, uh, chasing, trying to get some, uh, some leverage, uh, some traction. What do you make of that? Well, I think it, it talks to new politics, right? And uh, traditionally, the Democratic Party has been about a candidate who's an outsider, who, uh, you know, you go back to Carter or Clinton, uh, even Obama, who uh, ignites some passion within the party. Uh, traditionally, the, the party, when it nominates the, the, the establishment choice, uh, has not performed great in history. Um, Joe Biden's obviously trying to change that. But you have Pete Buttigieg, who is 37, compared to the other people on that stage. Andrew Yang is trying to really connect with young people. So I think that dynamic is another one to watch tonight and how that plays. Two of those young people are, are native Texans on their own ground, uh, Castro and O'Rourke. Uh, both of them have fairly anemic numbers. Uh, how big a night is it for them, and could it be, uh, for lack of a better term, an Alamo for one or both of their campaigns? Eventually, money runs out. Eventually, the campaign has to realize the reality, and uh, we'll see if they catch fire. Leon Castro has had a couple of good debates where he was noted as having such. Um, I think Beto hasn't really taken off like a, a lot of people thought he would after the Ted Cruz um, uh, run here in Texas. I think this issue in the wake of the shooting here uh, fits in his wheelhouse, and I'm sure he'll, on that issue, really make a splash tonight. Well, that's a good pivot point because we have had four mass shootings in the state of Texas, a, a, a state that is uh, clearly pro Second Amendment, but uh, there's a big Democratic push for a special session uh, on, on, on addressing mass shootings. Uh, how big a role will it play tonight? Do you expect all of the candidates to speak on it? Yes, 100 percent. I mean, this is an issue that Democrats believe they have the upper hand against the, the president on this issue. Uh, I will say the dynamic in Washington seems to be changing a little bit, too. Uh, negotiations even today between Senator Joe Manchin and the president, uh, talks going on about possible expansion of background checks. Um, you know, red flag laws. There are all kinds of things being talked about that really were never a reality before, now seem much more so. Yeah, you know, here in the state of Texas, you have interviewed Lieutenant Governor uh, Dan Patrick, and he, he, that role here in the state is, is almost or equally powerful that of the governor. Uh, governor Patrick has, uh, has said that we need to look at stranger to stranger transactions. Uh, you know, is that significant when we have you know, died in the world, Second Amendment, NRA supporters bucking the NRA in the GOP. Yes. And I think you're starting to see Republicans up on Capitol Hill have that same view as the lieutenant governor here in Texas, that something has to happen. Otherwise, it'll be used as a cudgel in the next election against Republicans. They realize that. I mean, not only the, the practicality of the issue, but also the political aspect of the issue that has seemed to change in the recent months. You know, I use the term bread and circuses, but tonight we're going to hear lots of big dollar proposals. 
everything from uh, forgiveness of, of, of student debt to Medicare for all, uh, a Green New Deal. Uh, do you think, you know, do you think the American voter understands the price of those uh, of those programs, given a, a nation that's deeply in debt already? No, I don't think the American voter really understands that if the interest rates go up a point that we pay more on interest on the national debt than we pay for the U.S. military. That's a fact. So when you hear all these big ticket items, that has to be in the back of your mind. I hope there are more follow-up questions along that line. Uh, the problem is the reason the American voter doesn't know that is because the president doesn't take that charge either. He's not um, riding the horse of deficit and debt either. Uh, and that's striking because you look just a couple elections ago, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan campaigned in front of a debt clock on campaign stops. Now it's not a huge issue. And I think um, Elizabeth Warren wants to expand Social Security. You mentioned Green New Deal, Medicare for All, um, college uh, tuition. Eventually, somebody has to pay for it. We talk about the concept, uh, or they talk about the concept of modern monetary theory, changing all the rules to, uh, to fund these programs. Uh, I mean, is, is that potentially catastrophic? I've done a lot of stories about the deficit and debt, and there were a lot of people talking uh, that you know we were on our on the road to Greece uh, just a few years ago. So the dynamic has changed completely, even just from a coverage perspective. But I think that it, it behooves everybody just to keep it in the back of their mind that eventually that bill comes due. Last question: uh, What are you going to be watching for tonight? I'm going to be watching for the dynamics. Really, first, as we talked about between Biden and Elizabeth Warren, she's charging. She's rising in the polls. The perception is that he's a weak front runner, but he's not that weak. He's leading in a lot of polls. Uh, so Biden's performance is the number one thing to watch. But then the outside, who steps up and has a big night and becomes the alternative to one of those three, Biden, Warren, and Sanders. Brett Fair, thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. <laughs> they, this is not the year they get Texas, but they're coming. They're no, trying. definitely, because of the demographics, right? I mean, you know better yeah. than anybody. I, I talked to somebody the other day that said, you know, Rick Perry brought all these businesses in from California, but all their workers came in from California, too, with a different ideological, ideological look. And then you have, obviously, the demographics of 